This is the latest edition of Front Up, and I'm Whitey Willauer, and I've got Danielle Odell here. Danielle, good to have you on board. Thanks. Uh, nice I gather to be here. you're a triathlete. Uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I try. And, and where have you been doing this? Here and, and other places? Yep. Yep. I started before I moved to Nantucket. I lived in Tucson, Arizona, and that's where I started my. Um, little love affair with triathlon mm -hmm. and so yeah I've continued doing it while I live is here. Is it an Olympic sport yet? It is an Olympic sport yep since 2000 I think. Really? Sydney was the first. Oh it was uh, they had yep. it in Sydney mm -hmm. and uh, how, how well did the U.S. do in, in, in that particular? I, I don't think they did all that well. Really? <laughs> the Australians and the Canadians I think were, were uh, beating us then but uh, Talk about this woman here, Whitey. Yeah, now we've got this lady here, Karen Sm Smears. Smears, yeah. Smears. Yes, I find it appropriate that she's running in the background for, for this interview. And, totally unrelated topic. And, but. and who, who is she? <laughs> she is a professional triathlete. She lives in the Boston area. And she came down to Nantucket last weekend to talk about her experience in triathlon. And mm -hmm. she's had a pretty um, remarkable um, story. She's had cancer. She had a couple uh, totally freak accidents that have um, kind of put her out of the sport for a little bit, but she's come back to, she was a 1995 um, world champion in the Ironman distance triathlon. So it was really, really fun to have her on Nantucket talking to the triathlon community mm -hmm. here. Can uh, an athlete, professional athlete, can <coughs> they uh, compete in the Olympic Games? Mm -hmm. Yep. In fact, I believe Karen was trying for the Olympic team in 2000, but um, she, she didn't quite make it. She had, I think she had just been hit by a semi. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, and <laughs> That's one of the risks of, yeah. of a triathlon. Yes, riding on the road is um, taking your life into your own hands, that's for sure. And, and did you compete last year here in, in Nantucket? I did not. In fact, actually, I had a bike accident last year that I broke a bone in my back, and that put me out for the season, too. So, um, But I, I did compete in the Nantucket Triathlon two years ago, mm -hmm. and I was actually the winner, the female winner. Uh-oh. Yeah, <laughs> that was we're, fun. So we'll try. We'll give what? it a go again this year. We'll oh, see. Oh, you're going to do it this year? Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it's fun. Keeps me busy. Well, we brought you in not for a triathlon, <laughs> Indeed. but... <laughs> uh, we brought you in uh, for what you're doing with the Nantucket Conservation Foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us about what, what your, sure. your focus is there. Sure. Um, I have a degree in wildlife biology that I got from the University of Arizona, a master's degree. Um, and so I uh, do a lot of the wildlife projects at the Conservation Foundation, including um, a lot of the shorebird work, which is always a popular topic on Nantucket. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have spent... Not, not so much anymore, but uh, um, over the last four years, I've spent a lot of time um, working with spotted turtles in different mm -hmm. areas of Nantucket, um, mostly at Madawi Creek and Squam Farm area. And right now, I am collecting blood samples from spotted turtles. Uh, in Why is that important? <laughs> well, uh, we are looking at the genetic diversity of spotted turtles on Nantucket in different po populations on Nantucket and also um, comparing them to populations off island in the Cape and Southeast Massachusetts region. Now how did the spotted turtles get to Nantucket? They couldn't have swum over. We don't know. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> no. Uh, no, probably Nantucket wasn't always an island. Um, so it may, they've probably been here for thousands and thousands of years. Um, Since the last ice age. Probably. Um, so are they genetically but, quite different from the ones over on the mainland? Um, they, there is some evidence, and we haven't analyzed all the data yet, but there is some evidence that they are somewhat unique, um, but not terribly so. So they're um, not all that divergent from the populations on, in southeastern Mass. Um, but they've been here long enough to at least have diverged a little bit from mainland populations, which now, is are they mainly neat. Are they mainly at Madawi Creek and, and Squam Swamp? Um, those are the ideal places for them here, it seems. I mean, those are at least, as far as I know, some of the largest populations um, on the island. Um, but we also have them in pretty much any little wetland, um, Sanford Farm, Linda Loring, Eel Point. There's um, there's basically anywhere there's a small wetland 
um, you might be able to find spotted turtles. But yeah, Madawi Creek and Squam Farm, Squam Swamp area have huge populations. And in fact, in talking to some of um, wildlife biologists from across Massachusetts, um, it's thought to be that Nantucket has the has the best or healthiest populations in the state, which is pretty neat. Healthy For meaning largest, largest, or just um, they don't have a disease. Yeah, no, no, sorry, largest populations. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so if I found a spotted turtle, what should I do about it? Well, actually, right now we are heading into the time where people will be finding spotted turtles. Mm -hmm. um, they are making their movements out of the wetlands and or out of the vernal pools and wetlands where they've spent the winter and heading to areas where they're going to be finding food and then they'll start mating and then in June they'll, the females will start um, looking for nesting areas. So if you find a turtle in the road particularly, um, you want to move it in the direction that it was going um, because turtles are very stubborn. and. If you move it back where it came from, it's just going to go right back across the street How again. How does it know where to go? It just, it has like an internal compass and nobody n has figured that out. It's just like you migrating turn it around. birds. <laughs> so. Yes, and I've tried and it just goes, it goes right back. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, it's that, nobody really knows how that works. The, the compass of birds and, and uh, reptiles, they just, they don't know. Um, do but they go somehow, the same way each year? They often make repeated movements. Yep, you tag year them so you know which one is which? Year after year, indeed, yeah. Um, we have lots of turtles at, at Squam Farm in Madawi that have um, individual notches um, filed into their the scoots on the edge of their carapace, the shell on top, mm -hmm. um, so we know exactly who they are and we can follow them over time. But we've also had turtles marked with um, radio transmitters in the past. Um, we don't right now, but we have in the past, and we've monitored them across several years. So we know that they, they end up, they come out of the same place every spring, and they go to the same pools of water in mm -hmm. the summer times. Um, presumably they nest in the same areas, but I haven't actually found one nesting yet. Um, and then they, they go back right where they came from in the fall. So no, they're Now very, how do they spend the winter? Um, they, they hibernate. Uh, <clears throat> they need to find an area that where they're going to be submerged for most of the winter. Um, and that's basically to make sure that they maintain a kind of a constant temperature. They don't want to be exposed to air because the air temperature fluctuates so much, um, you know, from day to night. Uh, so they want to be submerged. Their whole systems just sort of slow down, almost shut down. Um, and uh, so they don't need to breathe all that often. but. On a really on you know weird warm winter days, they will come up sometimes to bask in the sun, raise their body temperature a bit, and then they'll go back down until they um, come out in March, mid March. Do they have to breathe air? They do have to breathe air, but in the winter when everything just kind of they just go on a whole other level, they just shut shut down, so they don't have to come up to breathe air. Do you keep uh, any of these spotted turtles in your lab? No, I don't. You don't. No, if I f if I have one that we need to draw blood from, like if someone finds a spotted turtle, I'll sometimes keep it overnight. But no, I never. Um, it's actually illegal to um, collect turtles, um, so we never. You know, I never collect a wild turtle and keep it. Mm -hmm. um, and that pretty much goes for everybody. Don't collect wild turtles. <laughs> um, why is that? Um, well, worldwide populations of turtles are declining, and it's becoming a big problem, and there's several reasons for it. Um, the pet, ta pet trade collection is one of them, um, also just declining amounts of habitat um, or separation of habitat by road construction and um, um, building houses and things like that. So Now, I see these signs that says <coughs> turtle crossing. Yeah. Where do those come from? I believe the DPW um, put those up. They're, the ones on Madiket Road and Cliff Road, I think, came from the DPW. Um, last year, a group of kids from the Boys and Girls Club, um, they got kind of on a turtle kick, and they sort of took it on as their pet project. So they, I think they put up a sign out Wawinet Road and Pulpus Road, where there are often turtle crossings. So 
but I think they all came from the DPW. But they don't consult with you, do they, about <laughs> where to put the turtle? Um, well, actually, the the sign on Madiket Road, um, Scott Leonard actually headed up this this. Pro it's also a pet project of his too. There's a spot on um, on Madiket Road where we often find smashed, um, painted, and snapping turtles, um, and it's you know people. We all know people go way too fast down that road, and uh, a turtle doesn't stand a chance against a car. So um, that one, we did have some input on that. The one on Cliff Road, I don't know that I've ever seen a turtle crossing there. <laughs> but the one on Pulpus, for sure, there's that's um, a, a big area where yeah. we find a lot of turtles crossing. Now, how many species of turtles do we have on the island? Well, we have three um, and possibly four. Um, we have snappers, painted turtles, and spotted turtles. Um, a few years ago, we did find box turtles out here. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know. There were two, two individuals in one summer, one in the Surfside area and one in the head of the Plains area. And we're not entirely sure whether they might have just been released pets because people often do that. They don't really, they mm -hmm. think they're getting their their kid a great pet but turtles are the worst pets because they will outlive your child and <laughs> when your see. child is 18 and uh, he or she goes off to college and they don't want their turtle anymore what often happens <laughs> is people just set them free and that's a terrible thing to do um, so the box turtles may um, they used to be they certainly were native species to Nantucket but um, they I don't were? they were mm -hmm. um, and when we did we popped uh, some transmitters on those box turtles, and Edith Andrews was there the day that I put a transmitter on, and I think she, she told me that the last time she had seen box turtles on Nantucket was in the late 60s. Um, so this was new and pretty fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we did follow them for a year just to make sure that they would do what they were supposed to do, which was, you know, um, eat and hibernate, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they made it just fine through the winter. And so we followed them through another summer and then we removed the transmitters and set them on their way. So they may be uh, holdouts that just hadn't been seen in a, in a good long time or they might have been pets, but um, they, they did at least survive the winter and we're hoping that they're still out there. Now, how long do turtles live? Well, um, we, did, we don't know um, for some species. Some species will live, you know, like the tortoises, box turtles can easily live 100 plus years. Um, the spotted turtles, we don't really know. Um, Cheryl Creighton, who um, worked for the Tuckernock Land Trust, did some work in the early 90s with spotted turtles in Squam Farm. She was finding turtles that she was, she was guessing, you know, were in the 15 to 16 year range at that time. I have found those turtles again so they're still out there and so they're over 30 years mm -hmm. um, in the same wetlands doing the same thing that they were doing in the early 90s so um, over 30 years <laughs> is the best I can give you <laughs> now, <laughs> given now, that they don't encounter a car now, now let me ask you well, one <clears throat> more question about snapping turtles sure uh, uh, they're, they can be kind of dangerous couldn't they can't yeah, they they can yeah, yeah. Um, you don't want to put your hand in the way of an adult snapping turtle, that's for sure. Um, they're fast and their necks are a whole lot longer than they look. Um, and they, yeah, they can inflict some damage. Um, thankfully, I've never been bitten by a snapping turtle. Um, but if you, you can safely handle them, if you find them like in the road and you want to get them out of the way, you can pick them up from the back of the shell. Um, you can even, like they can't, their necks can't go like back. snap yeah. back. I mean, yeah. they can go to the either side. I wouldn't um, dare pick one up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they're scary for sure, and they're and don't fast. they grow fairly large? They they can get huge. Yeah, huge. Yeah, so I remember seeing them in my comet pond. Yep. And I, I said, my gosh, I don't even want to swim in here I with know. with these. I know. Yeah. I've heard tale that they don't bite when they're underwater. Mm -hmm. um, I have no idea what kind of truth there is to that. <laughs> um, but there's many times when I've been sticking my hands in holes that I can't, you know, I'm in water up to my 
shoulder and I have, I'm looking for spotted turtles, but I, I know one day I'm going to put my hand down there and find a snapping turtle and I'm not going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> no. How so. long have, uh, just one last question here. How long have you been on the island? Just over four years now. Really? I moved here um, for the job for the Conservation mm -hmm. Foundation. and um, Straight out of college or? Straight out of grad school, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And where did you go to undergraduate school? Uh, the Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington. Oh, sure. So, yeah, that was, uh, I graduated in 1999 and then mm -hmm. I did a, a bunch of different field jobs working with different species and eventually went to grad school in, in Tucson and then I moved here. Have you so. published papers and things like that? I have not. No, I haven't. But. Uh, but my advisor from grad school is still on me to. Uh, <laughs> I see. Would <laughs> you go publishing. for a PhD in turtles? I don't know about that. <laughs> I always said I wouldn't, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, I, I, we're getting the signal. I've got to got to end this great. all now. But thank you very much sure, for coming. Sure, no problem. And, and it's it's great to have you here. And well, thank you. Thank you for doing all of this for the island. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you.